So most of you have already been in the Galapagos Islands. It's a bucket list destination, of course, in Ecuador. And I'm really excited to, to share with you some operational facts and also some product updates that, that we have. Now that we can have some time to, to learn about the destinations, and I also welcome you to, to my home. I, I imagine that most of you are also working from home. And uh, also, forgive me if uh, I have to catch my breath. I am in Quito, directly from, from Quito, uh, 2,850 meters above sea level. So sometimes it's, it's difficult. Let's just start. This is going to be a, a quick webinar. I hope uh, uh, 30 minutes. So as you know, Ecuador has four clear regions, the Amazon rainforest, the Andes mountains, here you can find the avenue of the volcanoes, and also the Pacific coast. Then cherry on top, you have the Galapagos Islands, and we are going to talk about this region today. So this is the, the first webinar of our webinar series that we are going to have on Monday. So stay tuned with our uh, communications. Next Monday, we are going to talk about more about the Amazon region and the Pacific coast. And as always, I want to start with this phrase of uh, Alexander von Humboldt when he said, when you traverse Ecuador from the Amazon rainforest to the snow line of Cotopaxi, it equals a journey from Brazil to Northern Canada in terms of climate changes and plant formations. So it's a really diverse country, as you know, one of the most biodiverse countries on earth. And also, well, we have these four regions, but Jassy, our, our general manager, he always says that we even have a fifth region that is the, the cloud forest. So we it depends on on the altitude, the ecosystem changes really, really uh, drastically. So I want to start this journey in, in Quito. Uh, let's imagine that you are in your VIP lounge in your local airport, and we are traveling now to Quito, the capital of Ecuador. And if you come from the coast, when you step out of the plane, you are going to be already like uh, three kilometers uh, with difference in altitude. So it's quite an experience. And this is the point where most of the tours start to the Galapagos Islands. So it's good to take a couple of days before or after to explore the city. And there is a lot to do in Quito. A lot of good food, restaurants, museums, art, music, uh, parks. Quito is a cosmopolitan city with colonial history. We have one of the largest and best preserved historical uh, centers in Latin America. So it's worth it. Now, as you know, the Galapagos Islands are located approximately 1,000 kilometers or 600 miles away from the continental Ecuador. And this makes the islands unique because the islands haven't had any kind of contact with the continent. Uh, and that's why and that's why you find pristine wildlife. And that's why there are so many endemic species that you can find here. So of course, the Galapagos Islands are widely known as a natural lab laboratory of evolution. The archipelago is of volcanic origin. So it sprung out of the, of the ocean and we have 13 main islands and more than 100 rocky islets. Four of these islands are inhabited, being these uh, Santa Cruz, San Cristobal, Isabella, and Floriana. Aside from that, Galapagos Islands are a national park. 97% of the territory is a national park, but not just that, it's also a marine reserve. So it's worth 
to explore it on the islands and also underwater. It was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1978, the world's first whale sanctuary, because here you can find up to 24 species of whales and uh, a natural laboratory, of course, where Charles Darwin conceived the evolution theory. He says that the visit to the Galapagos Islands was uh, essential for, for the theory. And here he observed that the finches had different type of beaks depending on the island that uh, they were uh, living. And this is because they have different type of, um, of food, some insects, fruits, cactus. So that's how he realized and came up with the theory of evolution. And of course, the Galapagos Islands are the ideal place to, to see wildlife, to learn more about the, the evolution theory and direct contact with nature. So how to get to the Galapagos Islands? I can imagine that, that most of you have already been to the Galapagos or have already sailed a lot of uh, uh, packages and cruises to the Galapagos. And I'm just going to remind a little bit of the operation that you need to take into account when going to the Galapagos. So you start in Quito or Guayaquil. So you spend, usually you spend the night before in Quito or Guayaquil, and then you take a flight in commercial planes, commercial airlines from Quito, generally to Baltra, the most common option. And there's also another airport in San Cristobal. Here, there is an um, interesting fact about Baltra. Baltra was used in uh, World War II as a base for the Americans. So they protected the Panama, uh, um, the Panama Canal from Baltra. And this was a flat territory the, that they found so they could, could build the airport. So that is something interesting. And it was called uh, base Vita Vita, so uh, then the locals uh, called B3 and then it evolved to, to Baltra, so that's why it's called Baltra. Uh, so Baltra is located just a little bit north of uh, Santa Cruz and from Quito, Guayaquil, you have a direct flight, approximately two hour flight. The, these flights are usually in the morning, up until um, noon or 1 p.m. And the flights back to the continental Ecuador are in the late morning, noon, and up to early afternoon, uh, around 3.40 p.m. So what happens when you reach the airport? Uh, we don't have many transport options in, in the Galapagos Islands for obvious reason, reasons. So, we have a shared bus called uh, Lobito. And just for you to know, there are no seats available in, in these buses, but it's just a short ride of 15 minutes. And as you see, this is where the adventure starts. And the, the alternative, there's just a couple of VIP vans in, in the airport uh, for up to 12 passengers. Then when you arrive in, in Galapagos, after you take the transfer from Baltra Airport to the Itabaca uh, dock, then you have to go through the Itabaca Channel. And then you go through Santa Cruz Island, Island until you reach uh, Puerto Ayora. So it depends if you are going to stay in a lodge in Santa Cruz or maybe if you are going to go on a cruise, you have to reach Puerto Ayora and it's going to take about three hours from the time that you arrive in, in Baltra Airport until you reach your hotel or cruise. So here you can see the Itabaca Channel and there is something special about the packages we offer at Tropic because we give the chance to clients to start the activities while the other tourists are still uh, in the ferry you can start doing kayak or stand up paddle in the Itabaca channel then from the Itabaca channel 
you can see in the photo, you just take a, a truck or a minivan, and then you go through the island until you reach Puerto Ayora. It's good to mention that there are some intra and inter-island transport units. And you have boats, like public speed boats. You can also charter some speed boats. And there are flights, uh, short flights, between Santa Cruz, Isabela, and San Cristobal. Those are just small planes from five to nine seats. And the estimated navigation time inter-island is 2.5 hours. So as you can see, it's really easy if you are doing a land-based tour to transport yourself to the different islands and get to know more of the wildlife and do more activities in other islands. So what is good about the tropic that we have our own office in Galapagos, in Puerto Ayora. Uh, you have personal assistance for transfers and, and embarkation, option of briefing and launch uh, the VIP room at the airport. And as I was telling you, the option of heading directly to the Itabaca channel for a kayaking or stand-up paddle experience. This is just exclusive of Tropic because we have the permits to do that. And you, have, you can have peace of mind because we have our team that you can see here in the photo. And also Jassy, our, our general manager, is here. So they will take care of any need of your uh, clients. So how much time do I need to explore uh, the Galapagos Islands? Of course, uh, the minimum stay is uh, three nights, even if you're doing a land base or a cruise, there are some cruises that the minimum itinerary is four days and three nights. And the recommended stay, we always recommend to do it at least uh, one uh, to two weeks so that you can get to know and visit most of the islands and see uh, most of the species because there are certain islands with uh, a specific species of course when to to visit the the galapagos islands this is a really important question and it's good to take into account that as we are located in the equator line we don't have the, the four seasons of course just warm uh, season and cold season. In Galapagos, the warm season is from December to June, where you can find more wildlife on land, flourishing vegetation, fewer land tortoises in, in April and May. The cold season from June to November, more marine wildlife, drier ve vegetation, cooler water you find also from uh, July to September, which is the diving season, but you also find rougher uh, seas. So, the Galapagos Islands operate uh, all year long, so it's not that you find a big difference. But of course, as the Galapagos have the influence of the Humboldt current and also uh, La Nina, uh, there are some months where the water will be uh, cooler. So now let's talk a little bit about the, the islands. We start with Santa Cruz islands. This is the, the main island where you find Puerto Ayora and where you find most of the population in Galapagos. And here I have a question for you. How many people do you think live in the Galapagos? Maybe 5,000, 10,000 um, or more. Please, you can answer also in the, in the Q&A. And, and Daniela or Jesse will tell the the right answer because sometimes people think that there are no people living in the islands but actually in santa cruz you find most of the of the population in galapagos and also most of the hotel options and i'm going to show you a little bit more about them so santa cruz as you can see is one of the central islands in the archipelago and the perfect spot to start any any tour if you're doing a land-based tour it's uh, very well located central so you can easily reach isabella san cristobal 
Floriana and some other islands and, and rocky islets. So in Santa Cruz Islands, of course, it's uh, ideal for national park exploration. You can do some daily tours starting in the morning. You visit one island, a full day tour, and then you come back in the afternoon. You can do some diving, of course, snorkeling. There are uh, incredible places to do that. Visit the Charles Darwin Research Station. This is a, a must visit when you go to, to Galapagos and Santa Cruz. Uh, here you will learn more about the evolution theory and see the giant tortoise uh, reserve. There is uh, something that your clients cannot miss. Then San Cristobal. San Cristobal is located in the to the east of the, of the archipelago. And here we have the second airport uh, in Puerto Vaquerizo Moreno. Here in San Cristobal, there is this uh, kicker rock, a really nice attraction, ideal for doing snorkeling, even diving, where you can find uh, marine uh, tortoises, marine turtles, also sea lions, you find uh, sharks, you can do island circumnavigation. It's easy to take a trip to Española from Cristobal, and if you have some clients interested in, in more uh, activities and adventure, you can uh, also do surfing. So now let's go to the biggest island, Isabela. This one that has like a, a seahorse shape. And this is one of the youngest islands in the, in the archipelago. Uh, as I was telling you, all from volcanic origin, some islands are three to four million years old. And there is something really interesting that some species have already been evolving more than 10 million years ago, but the islands are three to four million years ago and they just sprung out of the ocean. And this is why Isabella is one of the most um, volca volcanic uh, active island in the world with people living on it. Also here you find the Galapagos penguins. So it's really, really strange to find penguins north of the equator. And this is a place where you can see uh, the, the penguins, the, the second smallest penguin in the world, the, the Galapagos penguin. Also uh, swim with sharks hiking the Sierra Negra Volcano. Uh, here is a really nice spot to do some hiking from, you can do two hours, four hours, depending on the on the passenger and on the dif level of difficulty. And also visit another giant tortoise breeding center. As you know, there are different species of tortoises depending on the island. So it's really interesting to learn about them. And let's talk about the, the four inhabited island in Galapagos, Floriana. Floriana is located to the south of the archipelago. And it's a really nice point to visit also in a, in a land-based tour where you can do some stargazing. You have a clear sky. It's the perfect point for that. There is uh, this... Um, curious place called the post office uh, bay trail as you can see there is a, just a, a small uh, post box post office here and the uh, uh, pirates the whalers the, these big ships that used to come here 300 years ago they used to put their letters here and when other ship came if they were going to that destination they took all the the letters and, the, and took them to the destination. So now it's also possible to drop some postcards there and some uh, people, some tourists still can take them to, to their countries where they are going near the, the address. So that is a really fun and unique attraction in this island. You can also find the Sierra Lion uh, colony to do amazing photos and find one of the first settlements of uh, uh, human population here in the island. So 
it's not just about the, the wildlife right? but also about the people that lives in the island so as you know we have different types of uh, or modes of traveling the in the islands of course we have first the, the land-based option and we can say that the land-based is more flexible you have more accommodation options better price range more private you can also have the chance to have more contact with the locals and it's ideal for those who are on, on a tight budget budget or schedule so it's also easier to do some uh, tailored activities for kids and family and it's good if your clients suffer from seasickness so in land base you can also do just a single island stay just in santa cruz or san cristobal generally or do the island hoping where you go from island from island staying a couple of nights and you can do that in santa cruz san cristobal isabella and floriana with really good lodging options then of course you have the the cruise option and that's how the tourism started in the galapagos in, in the 80s with, with the cruises and actually tropi was a pioneer uh, in the land-based options uh, starting in, in the 90s so cruising is also uh, a good option if you want to go further to the further islands for their attractions there are some different type of cruises most of them naturalist ones and some specific for diving so of course you have a wider scope of visits you optimize time of transfer between sites because you navigate in the night and you visit a new island on each day and there are some sites that are exclusive for for the cruise ships that you can not reach if you are doing a land base especially those uh, places north of, of isabella so here well you have uh, less hassle more flexible well less flexible because you have fixed itineraries and let's say that it's less intimate because you are all the time sharing with more people unless it's a, a charter a cruise and of course this is like the higher price range but it's good if you want to see specific sites of flora or fauna and the best of both worlds is a land and cruise mix if time and budget permit so you can stay a couple of nights in, in santa cruz maybe uh, in the highlands uh, sharing with the giant tortoises and then you can uh, ride a cruise so let's talk a, a little bit about the land-based options what is good uh, about the land base is that you have a wide range of options in terms of lodging like safari style these uh, tented camps luxury lodges we have family friendly options and more uh, let's say urban urban style hotels in the island as you can see here you have the chance to to share and to see the the main reason to visit the, the galapagos that is to see the giant galapagos tortoises so uh, we in tropic have the this special option of lodging called magic this is a really nice place where you find six tents six uh, three houses and we will we will we will also have some suits uh, suits coming soon so it's ideal if you want to to have an experience uh, with the giant tortoises they are roaming free around you can have just a breakfast and see them just uh, feet away from from you and there's also this lava cave um, this is a favorite post dinner activity and just a short walk to the natural lava tubes ideal for a nightcap and just relax around the fire and share stories from the day's adventure so that is the perfect way to to end the day and also magic galapagos features a middle deck another special spot where 
you can see of course the, the sunset and we can also offer some special activities like uh, a special class to do a local cocktail so this is ideal if you're traveling in a group and you want to do a, a different activity and aside from just being um from being a, a tented camp a lodge a lodging option we have a nice project here that is the magic um, conservation area here we have 12 hectares that are going to be dedicated just to take care of the giant tortoises and we are going to plant 48,000 native escalation trees providing more space as well as food and shade for for the tortoises two drinking pools that will be controlled constructed to provide water and also for for growing more trees and an interpretation center uh, to learn more about these incredible species so it's not just about the the lodging option and helping the local community but also uh, a sustainable option to to take care of this endemic species and i also wanted to let you know a little bit more about the options you find here in Santa Cruz. Near Galapagos Magic, you find uh, Montemar. These are uh, private villas. You can see really nice villas where you can also have contact with the Galapagos tortoises. And this option is ideal for, for families. And uh, there are three villas here. So there's the option just uh, for you to cook with your family and also if you want just to to have a chef a private chef experience and also do some wellness activities like yoga uh, or massages spa so if you just want to relax with your family and start your trip in galapagos this is a really good option also we have uh, Galapagos habitat in in Santa Cruz. This is a really nice hotel with um, seafront, so your room is going to face directly to to the sea, and there are some fauna spectacles every minute practically. So it's a really good option with uh, 17 rooms, and the Galapagos habitat is also well complemented with uh, this yacht the windrows so this is a really good option if you are doing a land-based tour uh, the windrows is a, a state-of-the-art uh, sun seeker a motor yacht for up to 16 passengers so as you saw already it's really easy to travel uh, from to island uh, from island to island in the Galapagos and this is a really good option you stay in a really nice uh, hotel in the highlands or in Puerto Ayora and then do daily activities in this uh, luxurious uh, motor yet so there are some full day tours that are available from Santa Cruz of course you can reach uh, Bartolome in two hours if you want to see some uh, species that are not in all islands you find here the galapagos penguin you find blue-footed boobies marine iguana galapagos hawk you can also travel to north seymour just in one hour south plaza 1.5 hours santa fe also 1.5 hours all of them of course have different species of wildlife and some specific points to do underwater exploration uh, like snorkeling so of course we can send you more information about this later and let's talk quickly about the sea-based options where as you already know we have different type of, uh, of ships of, of hulls you can find catamarans vessels yachts uh, small ships have, um, for 12 to 16 passengers and our big ships that are not so big that can have up to uh, 100 passengers so 
now that we are in this, let's say, strange times that people are looking for more private options, maybe you can consider doing a land-based trip in a private villa where you can and we can have more control of all the conditions in the crucibles of course is a little bit more difficult you're always going to be surrounded with people but it's of course a, a good option in the galapagos because you already have most of the activities included uh, your own naturalist guide if you like to do sailing and uh, this is ideal and what about the size and capacity of the vessel a smaller is not necessarily better uh, if there is a small yacht you have less privacy from other uh, passengers because you have fewer coming common areas greater sea motion is uh, perceived and you have less guides on board in of course in these small yachts there are less activities in the big yachts you will even find jacuzzi they have a kayak a stand up paddle um, some uh, even glass bottom uh, canoe so it depends on the type of passenger on, on the type of experience this is also good when you want to charter all the all the ship uh, for a family, for a group of friends, uh, up to 16 passengers, because in Galapagos we have this regulation, the uh, guide and tourist radio is uh, 16 passengers maximum. So yeah, this is a favorite option for, for European markets mostly. And the bigger boats are best for people who suffer from seasickness because you're going to, to feel uh, the less, the, the waves and and the motion above the sea. So, as I was telling you, in the cruises you find more type of activities and equipment already included, snorkeling equipment that is generally included in the price. Sometimes the wetsuit uh, may cost extra. And you also have kayaking, stand up paddling options and the glass bottom boats that are usually available only on the on the bigger vessels it's also good uh, for extra activities like naturalist lectures and they sometimes offer kids activities there there's a doctor on board in general in the big ships and there is more uh, public spaces in the in the big ones so the Wi-Fi is scarce in the islands, but some of them uh, have Wi-Fi free or at extra cost. And finally, I wanted you uh, to invite you to look at the South American Academy. Uh, you can find this link in our Tropic webpage, www.tropicecho.com, in our agent hub. And you can learn more about the islands and the type of uh, of ships, the different attractions, wildlife, and some other destinations in South America. So you can re request access to the Galapagos, um, to the South American Academy. And also we have a nice image bank called South American Visuals that could help uh, your marketing efforts. And if you want to use it in your, your webpage, in your, in your marketing material, it's totally uh, fine. So just to end, uh, I wanted to, to remind you that we are uh, located in Ecuador with two offices, one in Quito. Here you can see the, the team in Quito and one office in Galapagos. So we are able to offer you any kind of um, tour in mainland Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands with the best uh, quality and, and we have a uh, won some awards in, in the years we have been operating more than 25 years and it all started with a, a jassy or a general manager always thinking in sustainable tourism and sustainable options in ecuador so that's why we always try to include the local um, population we have some specific programs so that you can have 
contact directly with the people that is living here in Ecuador. So it's the, the other side of Ecuador that we are offering you in our tours and programs. Thank you very much. I hope you, you have enjoyed uh, this short presentation. If you have more questions, you can drop us an, an email at diego.escover at tropicecho.com.